you know, the downside was that what we were doing as a, when I was small was so exciting that kind of the rest of life, like school, didn't feel, kind of felt dull to me in comparison. Your dad had an interesting observation that you weren't really very good at other traditional sports. You were a great climber from a really early age, but he said, baseball, you were pretty bad. You, you had poor hand-eye coordination. You weren't good at it. Yeah, I was good at the sports that you could suffer. Like, I was a good wrestler. I was a good cross-country runner. But anything that involved coordination, I was quite bad at those things. By the age of 20, you had made your first free climb of El Capitan at Yosemite National Park. Just so people understand the terms, give me a definition. What is free climbing? Yeah, it's a, free climbing is a very confusing term, first of all. That free part makes everybody think that we're not using ropes, like if we fall, we die. It's not like that at all. We're, we're doing essentially what you would do if you go to your local climbing gym. We're, we're climbing the surface of the rock, and we have ropes with us to protect us in case we fall. Of course, when you're doing it on a 3,000-foot scale like that, though, there's not ropes previously in place. You have to carry, carry them up with you, and um, you know the logistics of making it safe is, uh, is kind of a fun game, really. So you're 20 years old, climbing El Capitan. Give me a sense of what that sheer 3,000-foot tall face is like. What is there that you can grab onto to propel yourself upward. There's several, there's a lot of different ways to climb El Cap, and I spent 20 years of my life kind of doing progress, progressively harder ones, and so I first went to, you know, the, the major crack system. Sometimes you're shoving your whole body in cracks and your hand goes in all the way. Um, but as they got harder and harder, the holds got smaller and I climbed blanker sections of the wall. And on the Don Wall specifically, which is the climb that I'm kind of most known for on that wall, the holds are very small. Like you know, a lot of them are the size of the edge of a dime or you know, you're standing on things that you, you have to take a little bit of chalk and mark it temporarily so you can see it because if it's even, you know, five feet away from your eyes, it's too small to see. When you were 21 years old, you were at your home and you were building a platform for your washer and dryer. Something went terribly awry as you were doing this job. You were working with a table saw. What happened? Yeah, I, I was a uh I was a poor, <laughs> poor cheap soul, and I was just trying to make shims out of a two by four instead of going to the hardware store. And I ended up uh, chopping off my left index finger, which is kind of bad for a climber. You're like a pianist, in effect. This is, this is your, how you make your living is with your fingers. Yeah. And you thought that when you lost half of your finger, that you had lost what you loved most in life, which was the ability to climb. Yeah, I feared that. I feared I had lost it. Um, I, didn't, I don't know if I would ever ex say this experience was crushing because pretty immediately I became determined to um, not let it hold, you know, not let it stop me um, because I loved climbing. I love climbing more than just about anything, so. In 2015, you undertook your biggest challenge ever, climbing what's called the Dawn Wall, part of El Capitan, again, Yosemite National Park. What is it that makes that climb so extraordinarily challenging? The Dawn Wall was the sort of biggest, steepest, blankest section of El Cap. And it was something that took me, you know, 15 years of climbing on other parts of that wall, other aspects of El Capitan to realize that it was possible. But, you know, climbing, in climbing what we do is we continue, is, what, is we, uh, we take things that seem impossible, we break them down to their elemental parts, and then they therefore become possible. I could start right now and for the next five hours explain like every single move of the whole route to you. Um, you have to memorize it when the climbing is that hard to that detail. You have to know the angle that your hips are at, the, you know, the angle that your foot is the touch and wall, how much pressure you put on every hold. And so, um, yeah, and I find that fascinating. I find it really engaging. You do have ropes in case you fall. Mm -hmm. And you do fall. That happens, right? Yeah, we fall all the time. I mean, the, the Don Wall took us seven years of, of work. We had to go up there and um, practice it for seven years. And, you know, we would fall sometimes 50 times in a day, 100 times in a day, potentially. So you fall over and over and over again until you can finally do it without falling. How far do you fall? Um, generally, it's just a few feet, but when there's places where the protection is quite far apart, so you know, up to 60 feet. How many days did it take you to climb the Dawn Wall? Um, 19 days in our final push. So seven years of preparation and then 19 days. Doing the, uh, the Dawn Wall, El Capitan climb in 2015, as we said, was called the climb of the century. Have you got any big 
monster goals that you still want to fulfill? You know, I, kn I know that I have the tendency to get incredibly obsessed by things, and, and so I'm just not letting myself go there right now. I need to take a break <laughs> a little bit. I need to pay attention to my family. Um, it would be very easy for me to start going out there and um, looking for big goals, but I just know if I did right now, it would, it would totally consume me.